Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast today presented by Shift Hockey. Go to shifthockey.com and use code CHGO for 10% off your next stick. And when you hear Shift Hockey, that means Nick Felino's here. Ooh. Hey, Nick. It does. Thanks for being with us, man. It's happening. You're very smiley today. Came yeah. in, you know, bouncing off the walls. Very well, it happy. It stopped raining, so I'm a little happy too. <laughs> oh, <about that>. wow. <laughs> and the the winds better. probably have something to do with that too. Yeah, that is definitely the case right now. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice to obviously be on the, the winning side of a few games here and I just like the way we're playing. That's probably the biggest thing, too. I just like the, the attitude, the mindset, and the, the way our team's coming together. So you had four assists the other night. Why are you not scoring goals? Yeah, you know what? I'm <laughs> going to start. I'm going to talk to Bedsy and Kirsch. They seem to have this, <laughs> this pass only to each other thing. So I gotta, I'm going to start trying to get in on that. No, yeah. no I don't mind at all. It was, uh, it was a pretty fun game. And just, you know, the goals that we were scoring, too, it wasn't even just the power plays. It was the five-on-five. Five. I was really encouraged by how our line was coming together and the way we were generating offense. Cause that's the NHL is great. Like it's, you know, you obviously want to score on the power play and makes a big difference, special teams, but when you can get five on five goals, you're going to put yourself in a position to win a lot of nights. Well, it was your uh, first ever uh, four assist game. I went back and checked all the scoring logs myself. I, I had another one, but no, I was. You had three a couple of times. Yeah. Son of but a yeah, God. First ever uh, four assist game. So that's I figured cool. uh, we'd celebrate with some treats. <laughs> Yeah, what, what do we got? Is it bacon? In our beautiful Coors Light bucket. <laughs> uh, brought some apples here. I like that. So if actually. you'd like to <laughs> select an that? apple. Yeah, I'll take that. Apple a day. Or four apples Pass a it day. on down. I mean, bacon was better last time. But I yeah. Bacon I'll take was apple. better Apples last are time. all right. Yeah. Do we have apple bacon? Is that? Apple wood. Can we like compromise? We could. I mean, that's, I basically, that's basically health food. I don't know if yeah. I'm... And there's one in there for Lawrence as well. Yeah. Come on, Jay. Throw me my apple. Yeah, he, he sounds like he needs an apple. There, there you go. go. There you yeah. go. Right-handed, too. Nice. So, yeah. Nice catch. Good. Are we taking a bite out of it, or what are we doing? We yeah, could. it's good yeah. for the ASMR. That's all the rage yeah. these right. days. Both of my fake teeth. <laughs> That'd be even better. There you mm. go. Could you hear that in the uh, mm-hmm. microphone? Yeah. Good apple. Nice apple. Thank Beautiful. you. It's good crunch. Right. Good job. Well, that's our health food for I the have, day. I've yeah, eaten my fruit done. for the week. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a serving, right? A bite? Yeah, sure. It is in my world. But uh, grab ass aside, <laughs> your season this year has, how have you been feeling about it, knowing the role that you've had, role that you were coming into play, and, and you've put up points that you haven't in the last couple of years? How have you been feeling how the season's been going? Yeah, I'm, I'm not too concerned about the points anymore in my career. I mean, obviously, it's, it's nice. I mean, especially when you're put in a role to contribute that way like you need to right it's I always say there's a little bit of selfishness you have to have I tell that to the guys all the time there's there's a a responsibility when you're put into a role especially an offensive role you have to produce I mean that's just the reality of the business we're in but you know for me and where we're at and I'm sure a lot of guys like it's it's just what are we doing to move the needle forward as an organization as a team and that's what I really judge myself on this year and so I you know I kick myself a couple times or I'm you know I'm proud of probably the past week and, and so or so here, maybe the distraction of a trade deadline and knowing that this is our team and maybe some guys have settled in like, all right, this is where we're going to be and I better, and then maybe that's helped, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to push and I'm sure a lot of guys in that room are, it's not just me either. There's, there's a lot of great leaders. You know, you got Jason Dickinson on the back end or on the, on, on the and helping me as well. And Seth Jones in the back end, Connor Murphy in the back end, Jared Tenorti in the back end, T- Tyler Johnson, who's won cups. So there's a lot of guys in the room that, that understand what it is to win. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to work with them because, you know, we've, we've tried to push this together. Um, and, you know, it's, it's taken a little longer than probably we'd like. But um, I'm starting to see some of the, the things pay off right now. And I'm encouraged by that. But I, I'm also not going to get ahead of myself either. I want to see it again. I want to see it again. That's the, That's what winning in the NHL is it's on nights where 
okay, we played against certain teams. Can you go do it again against uh, maybe a little bit better team? Or can you stick with it when you're starting to feel good about yourself and not get bored? Like, oh, we need to score seven every night. No, can you win 2-1? You know, it's not it's not not being satisfied with what we've done. It's just knowing that there's way more layers we got to put on it. Yeah. We've heard a lot about building culture <clears throat> over the last two seasons since Kyle and Luke got here. <clears throat> you have a lot of guys in this room that are going to be back next year. You kind of have your core set for the next couple of years. So how important is in the building of the culture is it to stockpile a few wins here down this last month of the season? 100. We actually just talked about that Um you know, as our little leadership group and just how, how important winning is like it, the, the habit of winning and, and what it feels like. And, um, it is important to stockpile them, you know, and, and, you know, now it's, it's, it's difficult because I know the, the season isn't, you know, we're not playing for playoffs maybe, but you're playing for the attitude and the, and the understanding of what it is to get into playoffs eventually. And this is a, a really important time where you can handle it one of two ways. You can say, Oh, the season's lost. And, and just go through the motions, or you can go out there and, and put yourself in a better position to, to hit the ground running come the off season and then into next season where you have a little confidence, you've built something. You've, you know, you're, you're so as, as an organization right now, especially as a group, we have to feel like that. We have to feel like we're, we're, just, we're just starting to get the ball rolling and we want to get this thing going in the direction we need it to. So it's, it's those little mindsets and habits that we have to have. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm going to be watching and pushing and, and sort of the other guys in the room. And I'm encouraged by what I've seen, but I want to see it continue. Well, though, I mean, last time we had you in, one of the things we talked about was, I think it was one of the post games. How do you stay positive when these losses keep piling up? Yeah. Right. And I think more, more yeah. you guys don't really pay attention to the draft stuff and the draft lottery stuff and those sort of things, but the fans do. Yeah. And I think there's a half that are like, lose every game, give us the best chance at number one. And then there's the other half that says, but you don't want to get in the culture of losing. And I just think when you see what happened in that Anaheim game, not that you guys have not been tight knit all year, but that scrum with yeah, Gudis awesome. and with Gibson and everything, you could tell like all, all of you have each other's backs. And I think does, does winning together kind of help build that a little bit? Is it, you know, celebrating together has to be better than sulking together. I guess I'm trying to say 100%. And I think too, like, you know, we're talking about winning, and it, the habit of winning and, like, that, you need good things to happen. Like, you can't just say, oh, like, you know, mired in a long losing streak. Like, wins matter. Like, you, you need to, in order to teach guys how to win, you got to win, right? Like, you get, you, so yeah. there is that, like, we got to get over that hump of, like, moral victories. We talk, like, it's it, it, winning and, and knowing what that feeling feels like is what really gets you there. So I'm really pumped that we're winning and understanding that. And, and you need – good things to happen you can't just be like oh it's coming or you know it's gonna come if you do this well we're doing it why isn't it coming so I'm really happy that we're getting those wins right now because we're doing the right things and and having each other's backs like you saw like that builds so much of a culture and like you after the game no one talked about the win it was like did you see Peter jump in there and like it was awesome and like it was just that was and like our guys were talking about man I didn't know where the fists were flying everywhere and Gibson came down and it's just it's it's fun and it and it and it's like yeah and like you're, and then you're pumping up your teammate and he's feeling good because he knows that he stepped up at a big moment and and you know so that's what I love about the game and and the game within the game we talk about because those are what builds culture those are what, what builds winning habits and um and seeing how excited our group was after that win and and you know and obviously the contributions from Bedsy and Kirsch and um, you know other guys jump I mean Mackenzie Entwistle getting a big goal and. It's it's really great when you have those kind of moments that you can really build off of and make a guy feel good about himself in a, in a year that's been a tough year. It seems like in this last stretch of games, it started with the road win against Arizona, it's finally getting that that road losing streak kind of like off your guys' shoulder. Was that like a big like catalyst to that like sense of relief and kind of like opening up a little bit more of the like okay, like this is, remember, this is what winning feels yeah. like, like, and, and kind of, you know, sitting back in that, in that feeling again. Yeah. You know, what I loved about that game. We had a really uh, good chat in, in Colorado about just, you know, coming together as a team and, and what that meant. And like, you know, because the trade deadline was coming, but it was like, you know what, commit, just commit to the team for one game. And, and it was funny before the game in Arizona, I'm sure nobody knows this, but our, our video just failed. Like the computer went crashed and, so we had no video. Like oh we gosh. just, and so Luke just kind of went over some key bulletins and, and we went and played 
and can't afford internet. In that and area. it was kind of <laughs> awesome in a way because I think everyone was just like, yes, yeah, let's just go play. And it, it was just like a really cool moment for our group where it was like, you could be like, Oh, the video didn't work and have all these sort of excuses, but we're like, it almost just freed everybody up. We're like, hmm. let's just go, let's go worry about the Chicago Blackhawks. We're not so worried about Arizona. And uh, it worked tremendously in our favor. I just thought we had jump I thought we played hard. We, we were just, we were engaged and, and, and it just, and it was caused, you know, a little bit of laughter before the game too. And then after the game, you know, we're trying to get no video for the rest of the year because we thought <laughs> that, was the, that was the winning recipe. But it's, it's those little moments sometimes that, that can kind of, you know, trick the mind and, and you just go play a game. And, and it's amazing sometimes when you get out of your own head, which a lot of guys were because it wasn't going well for us. And Colorado was almost at the, the, the lowest point, right? It just didn't feel like a game we really were engaged in and, and could get, um, you know, anything out of. And then we go into Arizona and, and back to back and, and dominate. And it was just a, it was a lot of fun to, to have that. And I think that's definitely what's, you know, started the role that we're on here a little bit. What's it like playing in the uh, Mullet Arena? <sighs> you know what? It's, it's not a bad, it's actually a fun arena. I'm just pissed that we're the NHL and we're playing in a small arena like that. You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm no disrespect to Arizona. Like that, that I'm sure those guys are like, we're the National Hockey League. I can't imagine the NFL would go and play in a 2,000 seat or 3,000 seat arena for their like. Right. Nobody else would do that. So I'm just disappointed that we're in that position because we're such a great product, and more people should have access to our our games, whether it's live or in person. And that's what's bothering me about that market right now. And then I'm sure you know it's well documented. Like Gary needs to figure that out. And our we're we're trying to get a resolution there because i know it's a great place to play a lot of guys that play there they say it's an awesome place to play but we need the municipalities to step up then and and figure out a way forward otherwise we're gonna have to look at something else because it's the national hockey league we should not be playing in a in a what is it a 4500 4800 yeah. i think yeah. it's capacity. cool don't get me wrong it's cool and it's probably a blast for those fans that get to that intimate of a game but we're, we're leaving 10 to 12 to thirteen thousand people out of coming to a game which is wrong yeah well, we have a, a sister station, uh, PHNX, is located in, in Phoenix, and they, they have a great uh, team that covers the Coyotes, like, like we cover the Hawks and everything. So they're, they've, uh, they've been in the thick of it trying to, to help push the uh, you know, arena agenda, that the last one that didn't work. There's a new one that's, that's going to work, um, or hopefully it's going to work. Yeah. It's, it's, it's moving forward. But how much do you guys pay attention to? As, as players like to stuff like that like when it's out of your market and then also like the the talks of like you know, maybe atlanta is yeah. going to get another team again or, that, or right? you or That's a incredible. team might go to utah or something like utah i don't know why i said it that way um <laughs> but how much do you guys like keep keep an eye on that when it's like out of your market you know we do i i uh, more guys than you think um it matters to us right like it's it's you know part of of our CBA, our bargaining, our so it, it matters how our league does is how we do is we're fifty fifty split right with the owners even though it doesn't ever feel like that, um, <laughs> so it's it is it, it matters and, and we want to see the league thrive you know we we genuinely love this game and and know that you know fans do too so it's just trying to put ourselves and our fans in a position for everything to have success that's all we want is if everyone's enjoying it everyone wins and. So yeah, we we I, I'm interested in Salt Lake. I think that's where uh, in Utah, Utah. Um, <laughs> but also, even I mean, I played in Atlanta, uh, not in Atlanta against Atlanta when Chelly was there. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny. <laughs> um, it, yeah, I'm. I'd like to see what they could do there because I didn't think it was well, you know, represented at the time. I saw it at the end of its time, but you know that that arena was pretty empty, um, unfortunately. So I'd love to see what the proposal there would be, but. You know, it, it, yeah, we, we need to obviously find a, a way to get more fans in stands and, and a place that can really embrace it. And I know in Winnipeg, too, they're having a tough time right now, which is crazy to think. Right, yeah. Um, with the year that they're having, too. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, but, you know, that's the economy, and those things are sometimes out of your control, too. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is something that definitely we look at and, and talk about in the room and um, wonder what could be. I think everyone was pretty pumped when Las Vegas was coming in. That's yeah, sure. yeah, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> well, I think it showed the first year. Yeah, you know, with, with the Atlanta thing, it's failed twice already, and you know the, it is becoming more popular. It's growing huge, so it's different now from even when the Thrashers yeah. were there. So it's not quite apples to apples. <laughs> um, but you know, you think maybe 
let's get a more traditional hockey market for these expansion teams. But you just mentioned, like, Winnipeg, of all places, is struggling when they battled tooth and nail to get a team back there in the first place. So maybe, you know, you look to where the people are going. Like, Nashville's worked. Yeah. And look at the growth of the city there. And, and I think Utah is a really interesting one. Yeah. But I, uh, do you think it should be a move or an expansion? Because now, I think it, it now be it's a move. 33 32 teams. 32 teams is, I think, plenty right now. Yeah. I think I'd like to see it move. But also expansion is great for the league, too, if they can handle it, right? So just the 33, just odd number. It's hard. To, like I didn't like that the one year um, before Seattle came in. Yeah. They, where – one team kind of has better odds to make the playoffs, right? Because you get seven teams right. on one side. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I also personally think we should expand the playoff format, but that's a whole other yeah. conversation. <laughs> did you did you like it when they did the 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 like play in round and everything? I, I mean, I did. I, I mean, obviously, you we benefited did, yeah. from, from beating Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I am I'm an old school guy, so like it is actually weird for me to say that because I'm, but I still think we should go one to sixteen too. Like geographically now private planes there's no commercial like there's really no difference i know maybe it's the, hey it's unfortunate you got to go play if seattle's got to play florida but that's life like I, I just think that that's the way it should be in a way um so maybe that would make the playoffs a little bit i just find it's crazy you get some really good teams that have to play each other in the first round yeah and, yeah, and yeah. sometimes those are like the ones you'd want to see in the stanley cup final yeah. so every year right. you lose a, a gonna, contender yeah in the first i mean round. just look at the Maybe Central less. Division, yeah. like Winnipeg, Dallas, or Colorado, one of those teams is losing in the first round because two of them have to play each other. Mm-hmm. And it should, yeah. you know, how many years did we get Sydney Crosby versus Alice Ovechkin in their prime in the second round? Yeah. Like, who right. was that in the second round? Yeah. That's a conference final. Always. Like, yeah, I and know. you sell more that way, too. Like, that's what I don't understand the league. Like, I get it second round, but people are going to watch anyway. And then you got that kind of a matchup. You're like, oh, man, this is good. Yeah, with a, yeah. those two guys against each other with a trip to the Stanley Cup final on the line. I mean, you don't – our job is done. The storylines have been written. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's – Well, and their, their argument was they want to grow the regional rivalries, but what grows rivalries is playoff contempt. Yeah. You look at the Hawks and Canucks during the 2010s, that is completely gone. That rivalry is gone now. Yeah. But it was the hottest rivalry in hockey at the time because they played three years – Yep. And it was tooth and nail every time. It has nothing to do with geography. No. Because at the same time, the Hawks were playing Minnesota every year in the playoffs and, you know, beating them in four games or five games. Yeah, and it just no it had no there. it had no steam to it. Mm-hmm. It's got nothing to do with Same with St. Louis geography. and, and uh, Chicago. Sorry, I was thinking yeah. of Boston. Because, like, last year, arguably the best team, and, and we should have handled Florida, but they're out. It's just amazing because Florida's not a bad team. They just – couldn't find their footing till late too. So I, I just, yeah, I do believe that that's the way it should go with the parody now in our league. Um, but I would like to see it expand. I just think having 16 teams out of the playoffs in our markets, especially as we're, we're growing, you don't want that like it as a league. I feel like there's more money to be had and more opportunities for fans to enjoy hockey. If their team is even having a battle to get into a, a playoff round, right? It's, it's a little right, more exciting. Yeah. So I don't know how that looks, but what do I know? <laughs> no, it's a, it, it, I love getting a player's perspective on it, though, because mm-hmm. like you said, you guys talk about this stuff, and I don't know. They they must be happy with the playoff system, but as a fan, it does feel like Ugh, it's too soon for a, a yeah. team that good to be out. Yeah, you know, it's it shouldn't be. And of course, in the one in the one v eight format, you would get that now and again. Yeah. But for the most part, the better team survived until the end, and it was the better way to prove yeah, a win. Yeah, but for the most part, it's yeah. Tough. I, I think with with the expansion of like if they did twenty, if they did the twenty four team system, and then they had the five and five through twelve all played each other in the in the play in. I, 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 for me, I feel like it takes a little bit away of the importance of the regular season. Yeah, because That's if you the fight, I have to. because you know you, you have half the league make it, half don't. But if you have three quarters of the league make it. The perfect example was in that that bubble season. Um, Blackhawks were twenty fourth place. Like they had no business yeah. being in the postseason, but it was expanded. They got in, and then they upset Edmonton in the first wild. round, which was like wild. Yeah, like didn't didn't expect that, that to happen. Yeah, that was, yeah right. <laughs> that have no like idea. They lost that series. Yeah. Holy Mata had like got, four goals. You like. got some guys. <laughs> let's be honest, right? You have some guys in Chicago. Who know how to play in playoffs? It's true. Edmonton they did at that time. D- doesn't yeah. right? Yeah. So that mattered in that situation. So mm-hmm. I do. I agree with you. It's it can be really catchy or like, you know, it can 
it can be sticky in that sense because, yeah, there's just there is no perfect system. I just I don't know yeah. how we can have sixteen. Even go to twenty teams would be ideal, you know, to at least have an opportunity. Not you know it's four more teams, but at least it's four more decent teams. Yeah, and if you're yeah, talking about sure. revenue, there's four more teams with playoff games. Exactly, mm-hmm. makes all the sense in the world, and he keeps more fans engaged. Yeah, it's a no brainer. Now, how do you feel about uh, the uh, the one point for the the overtime loss? How do I feel about two it? Two point system, three point system. I What's the next change I'm, on Nick Foligno's there, checklist? There, that's my no. That's <laughs> my, the only thing. I'm old school that I don't want that because then I think already we're seeing like, you know, who, 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 I, let's just say our our team in Boston. Like we beat the record most points in the regular season, but I think Detroit didn't have the overtime tie thing right. So yeah. they actually essentially still have it kind of or whatever the rule is. Like if you keep put, now you got three points for a win and two points for an over and one numbers are you can have 200 points in the season and it just looks right, right. weird in the record i know that's the way life goes but i just i don't know i, I have a hard time with that i still like the two one zero system I, but. I wrote about it uh geez now probably what, two three months ago and i talked to radish and uh dickinson about it and got their takes on it and actually when i was done talking to them went and ran the numbers for like the last three years if three points were for a win and it made like two teams flipped there's like very little difference. Really? I was shocked by that. Oh, okay. I was expecting like a major difference in the standings. Thank you. Um, and it was just thank you. <laughs> I don't know if we say major, major or, general, or general. We saluted because yeah, we're idiots. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're, we're um, dopes. And just there was like be a part of the group here. <laughs> barely, <laughs> barely a difference at all. Yeah. So it's really? interesting. That yeah, I was surprised. Surprised. All right, but well, you can't. You but you Shut also up, can't Nick. quantify. <laughs> but you can't quantify though if there's a third point on the line. How, how di- they're going to play the game how differently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's that can't be added well, into like those Minnesota, numbers. St. Louis, or, uh, Minnesota, Nashville the other day. Yeah. That was cool. Goalie. Right, right. Yeah. Did you know that if you pull the goalie? I, did you I know that rule it, about losing the point? Nobody, my brother told me that. None of the guys in Minnesota. Yeah, that's what, that's what yeah. uh, Friedman <laughs> just, said. Nobody knew they that. They just ran yeah. with it. It's probably better It's probably awesome. better that they didn't. That, they all said that. They're like, thank God, we would have been shitting our pants if we knew that you could lose the point. So that would have been a little more free. That would have been, man... Can you imagine, like, if they if they did allow a goal and then come to find out, hey, you guys they, don't get any points in that? Yeah, like, that would have been a little bit of a hostile uh, locker room. <laughs> You're a genius when it works. Yeah. Yeah, right. And I yeah. kind of like that he went for it. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Uh, speaking of going for it, hey. if you want to go for it with the best hockey equipment around, you want to do it with Shift Hockey. Of course, uh, Nick's appearance here with us uh, with the CHGO Blackhawks crew is presented by Shift Hockey. You can go to shifthockey.com, use the code CHGO, and you're going to get 10% off of your next stick. We definitely want to thank uh, Shift Hockey for making all of this possible. They are bringing the professional custom stick experience to organizations across Chicagoland. You can give your team the opportunity to, uh, to build a personalized elite stick for a fraction of the cost. Plus uh, you can work with shift hockey's designers to create a fully custom stick wrap. Uh, Find out more at shifthockey.com slash teams, or you can stop by uh, the third floor of Johnny's ice house West and see them in person. Again, use the code CHGO uh, at shifthockey.com, and you're going to get 10% off of your next stick. Uh, I have been using the the shift hockey stick in my uh, my my rec league this year. We're How many apples? How many three, genos? three, and one. Uh, t- two goals in the first game, so I got real real uh, cocky about myself. Uh, no no goals since, but um, I did have an assist in the last game I played in. So nice. three three points in seven games, not bad. You heard about your power. They're trying to shut you down. Yeah, if any, if you guys <laughs> go through any more injuries, just just let yeah. me know. I'll bring my bag and, it wasn't, and we'll be good. Four assists, so I'm not listening. It wasn't yeah. four. No, no. Sorry. And we've been having a great time playing daily fantasy with Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. That's where we are. We are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six players, uh, stat production, productions, and watch the winnings roll in. So, for instance, we like to play the Seth Jones more than in minutes. We like to play the Nick Felino more than hits. Oh, yeah. Most nights is two and a half. 
That's so, you know, what I get. Can you go? Can you go hit more people? Yeah, yeah hit more people, more people, please. Well, just like first shift, just hit three guys and yeah. get out of the way. So. Right, get it over. It's kind of hard though when his line I has the know puck that. all night. Yeah, that's true. That's, See? That is true. Got to get you back on the third. Turn it over. <laughs> yeah, turn it over. Throw I a like check. Having the puck, it's a lot. Of fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do too. My body feels better. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, a lot of fun though. You just combine two to six, and then the odds get boosted. But there's lots of ways to play it. It's not just you don't have to go six and zero to win. They've got injury protection. You can. Lessen the odds and and say let's if two or three hit if two of three hit mm-hmm. or five of six or whatever, it's really a fun way to play the daily fantasy. We're loving it. We do it basically every cool. game. Uh, go to prizepicks.com slash chgo and use code chgo for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's prizepicks.com slash chgo and use code chgo. More picks. I'm sorry. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy. So, yeah, when, when you're doing warm-ups, look up at us in a press box, and we're going to throw a number up there. Okay. That's how many hits we need. Perfect. We're not, awesome. legal. We're not actually <laughs> going to do this. Yeah, yeah. Disclaimer, this is all for fun. I think Shane Pinto already we don't, <laughs> we don't need <laughs> Nick <laughs> missing the 41 games <laughs> next year. Yeah. You will not participate. Just, you will not see just us. have more time to talk to us. Then. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, see? Exactly. My wife will kill you guys, though. For <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, she, we are, we are, a list. we are very, <laughs> Mr. Batman. We are clearly joking. That's a joke. We're, yeah. we're just kidding. We won't do that. Um, I do want to talk. We haven't talked about Connor Bedard yet. And people are mad. Um, end of the <laughs> second period, last game. Uh, I said to Greg, the Ducks are getting lazy right now. Like they're really lackadaisically ending the period here. Bedard forces a turnover, gets it to you, and you you guys score. Mm. That part of his game, the defensive part of the game, seems to be picking up now. Yeah. Everyone loves to point out the plus minus, which yeah. we know is a not everyone. Minnesota Wild fans, Minnesota like too. fans Minnesota and media Wild. like to point <laughs> it out. Can't Why that? Because <laughs> of Brock Faber. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah they want, they want Brock Faber to win the. Yeah, they uh, want him to win because he's got I mean, time on ice and plus minus. But okay. yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, any oh, other year, I think I think Bedsy's gonna get it, guys. There's pretty, yeah, I it's just breaking news. Up. We all think so too. <laughs> I, I, but I think that really favorite at, kid's great, though. He is. He a, is I watch him is, a lot yeah. as Marcus. So well, I, that's that's a, just a like side rail. It sucks that it's become this Faber versus Bedard thing because of a certain group of fans. It's like can't they both be good and yeah. different and entertaining? I don't know. It's always got to be give the 18 year old who's a point per game player. Uh, he he deserves it. He's been the best. He's yeah. got the most highlights. Uh, like if you want to have a plus minus highlight reel, fine, go for it. But it's I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to put this on him, but like that Faber kid's got a good. Like as he gets older, he's gonna have a good opportunity to get Norris's. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. For sure. sure. And, and, it's, and it's it's not to say that Brock Faber is trash. Uh-huh. Like it's just what Connor's been doing this season is Connor just better. incredibly impressive, and he's better. Yeah. yeah. I like your idea of a plus minus highlight tape. Yeah, just like a guy like yeah, like yeah. <laughs> on the blue show, line, just put his hands all up. The, all the times where the you know a wide angle, and you can put a little circle on Brock Faber, and here he is at the blue line, and then here's the goal being reel scored. Of him last into the celebration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Anyway, point being, yeah. it looks like Connor is committing to adding that element to his game. Yeah, I've noticed it the past few games here, and I've been really encouraged by it and excited about it because I think. He's starting to learn too that that's where you're going to create offense in the NHL. That's what I was talking about earlier. Is like, you know, it's all great to the freewheeling and the, but those those teams don't last, right? You can almost argue the Devils last year were that team. Like Jack Hughes was unstoppable, um, but now this year they're suffering because teams learn how to check, right? They learn how to play against you, and if you can't create offense from defense, or at least understand how to position yourself. In the NHL, it's it's really hard to be impactful if you can't be impactful five on five. Don't get me wrong, power plays, but they're running that you know a good power play is running if you're lucky at twenty percent. That's a really like so yeah. that's that's a lot to chance right uh, and, and trying to be a good team. So I think if you can get your five on five minutes to really reflect your impact in a game, you become a lot better team and a player. And I think that's where Connor's learning. Like just because he's young doesn't mean he can't have that um, mindset and, and attitude towards that and, and, you know, the value in that. And, and when your teammates see you do it, 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 it goes through the whole team, right? Like when you watch Connor Bedard play like he did and, and make that play on and the offensive blue line and keep the puck in, then other guys are like, well, I can do that. I got to do that. You know, if he's doing that, I, gotta, I better be that guy too. Yeah, Athens, you did it later in the game. Yeah. And that whistle's cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. What a great play. 
And then even the goal that Kurashev scores, like he's underneath me as he's coming. It's a great route he runs to them, give me a really good chance. Instead of having to bank it up the boards and you kind of leave it, that, that D can read it, I'm able to now go, give it to him underneath with a ton of speed and boom, him and, him and Kirsch are gone for a two-on-one. That's defense that creates offense. But now you're going on a two-on-one with, you know, three quarters of the ice, which Connor Bedard is going to make you pay for that, yeah. right? So <laughs> that's the beauty in, in watching him grow and, and that I've been waiting to see and, and really encouraged by and, and hoping to see more of, right? And I, I hope he's feeling like, and we talked about it, like I think he's feeling more comfortable uh, with that and understanding that. And, and listen, it's been a lot to process for him. And, and you know, he, all he's known is if I score more than the other team, we're going to win. Well, now he's realizing like if I play on this side of the puck too a lot of nights, we're going to give ourselves and myself a chance to really be impactful. Uh, going back to Friday night's game real quick, uh, that third period was quite the spectacle. I had a little bit of everything, including, I don't know if you noticed it, but a full stadium wave. Did you? Did you guys? I was <laughs> loving it because I, I was like wondering. I actually was like fixing something on my skate, and I heard like everyone cheering, screaming, and I'm like looking up, and I could see people trying to get the wave, and then they got it going. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, this was like, does that like? I mean, it caused like right after the wave is when the whole uh, yeah whole, <laughs> the wave the wave caused yeah the, uh, the, the waves fight, ca yeah. caused the wave of goals yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're pro wave is what you're saying. You, well, you I just it? think it's yeah, like as a fan, right. it's fun. Just don't say that in front of Troy Murray. Oh, he hates he it. He yeah. hates the way. <laughs> like he. I like, mean, they're having I look, a good time. I looked time. over and the press box was going. I could see him getting redder. Like, <laughs> he gets to talk angry to about, about it. it. But uh, I'm gonna go buy him just tomorrow. Be like, yeah, man, I hate the wave. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was just a. It was a fun night. It was you know a full house on a yeah. Tuesday. You know, thirty second versus thirtieth in the standing, but it didn't feel like that. No. You know, the building felt alive and felt like hey. This is like what we have to look forward to. A lot of fun nights like that. Hopefully, well into May and June, yeah. eventually. Um, but I, I just had to. I could tell when you came out for your third star. Yeah, you were having fun. I yeah. mean, it's just like that's what it's all about. Winning's fun, and and winning, and the way we're winning is fun. That's what I, everyone's contributing. You, that's what you're not leaving it to. Okay, is Connor going to get us six points tonight? Like that. That's great. Or you know, you five points. That's wonderful. But. Everyone really made a difference in that game. We had, you know, standing up for each other, big blocks, big saves, big moments in the games. Other, like, you know, Athanasio was flying out there again. It was just, it just felt like, you know, we came together as a group and, and everybody was genuinely excited for everyone's success. And, and that's what happens. You win and, and everybody jumps on board because it's infectious and it's fun and, um, and it breeds more winning. So we need that mindset, that attitude, but not forgetting. It's not about scoring seven. It's about what it took to do that. It's it's that's the process that we have to stay with. Not oh, I want to score seven again. That's great. I want to score seven. I want to score ten. But what's allowing us to do that? And if we focus in on that and harness that, uh, we can be a real scary team for years to come. So they caught you on the hot mic with uh, Bedard on the bench, yeah. saying you have so much you need to teach him, and not enough years on your contract to to do so. What what prompted? I, clearly a joking That's, comment. Yeah, yeah. I was just I was laughing because I always I feel bad because I'm like, man, I get caught on these. It probably looks like I'm just trying to talk to him for no reason. But I forget he's mic'd up all the time, so I need to remind myself. But I also like I like to have a good time with him. I think it's because he's yeah. so. If you watch him, he's so captain serious all the time that. It's that's trademarked. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I know. That. But that's I use it because it just reminds me of him so much. I'm always like, smile. It's okay. Like you're 18. You're allowed to have a little bit of fun. And he does like to joke back and forth. And what what started it was, you know, we're the day oh, you know, yeah. Fr uh, Freddie Freddie Mercury, yeah, yeah, from yeah. Queen. Yeah. Freddie Mercury. I almost said Frank Mercury. Freddie Mercury is up there with Queen, and I'm like, do you know who that is? And my biggest thing, Betsy and I go back and forth. Like he has no. I'm trying to teach him outside the game. He's probably going to teach me a ton inside the game, but I'm going to try and teach him outside the game because we had some hilarious moments where he doesn't know half the things that are going on outside the world and and it's great in 18 neither did i but i i'm baffled that he doesn't have even like a music culture or anything like that so i'm yeah, trying to zero. teach him along the way <laughs> and i said you know who that is 
He's like Beatles, and I'm like, oh, oh man. man. <laughs> and then at I least just he's heard lost of the Beatles. It. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I know yeah. part, partly he's joking, but then I just like, you know, back at him. I'm like, I have so much to teach you. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> so I just so don't creative know. editing oh, is what you're telling yeah. us. That yeah, that's was, what pisses uh, me yeah. off because I got the clip sent to well, that's me. That's another I'm like, company. Show the whole clip, you guys. Um, <laughs> no, we would never. Yeah, that's never what. Do that. So he thought Freddie Mercury from Queen. He actually didn't know what Queen was. I even said like, I sent him the music later on that night. I was like, we are the champions. Still didn't really ring a bell. He's he just played, gave me a thumbs he, up. He's played in how many like <laughs> hockey I mean. arenas and has never heard like "We Will he's Rock You" once. He's not. Ever. Yeah, he's like, too he's dialed too busy in. Busy watching his iPad. Bit. It's crazy. But so, that's what's great. Like he is it. Like he has that sense of humor, and that's what he was la- like. He's, you know, he, he covers it right now. I think that's why he likes wearing the bubble. He covers it with the chin chin thing yeah. on him. But he's got a lot of good little one timers or one liners, and um, he's got a good one timer too. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the stuff that I think is important to have with him. You know, I'm not going to be able to relate to him on every level. He's 18. Yeah. But if I can joke with him and we can have that camaraderie, then I think it just breaks down a lot of the barriers that we have in between us. But he's a great kid. Well, and I, I did a social video for us um, going around the room asking guys, you know, who would win in a Hunger Games style thing against, you know, each other, you know, teammates and stuff. I don't know if you got in on those I didn't get discussions. On. Okay, Alex Vlasic and Kevin Korchinski were like, going back and forth about like strategies and stuff like what they would do <laughs> they were really into it yeah i asked connor he had no idea what the hunger games were and i was just no like clue. okay like come on it's actually kind of genius so then you actually just don't talk to him about anything it's kind of smart i'm like maybe i should just not culture myself in anything i just won't have anything to offer any of the media and so he's pretty smart if you want to talk hockey i'll talk hockey otherwise i'm gonna start talking. sounding like you see sorrows no goals yeah. no goals yeah, yeah. it's very simple funny, that commercial I saw well, it's, that. it's funny like talking to him you know, he has to talk to us every week, at least once or twice. And you could tell he's just kind of getting done of like the same mundane questions all the time. But as soon as you ask him about a teammate or about a play or whatever, he, he lights up it. and talks about it. But like, what does he do that's not hockey? Nothing. <laughs> does he like play video games or does he nope. watch TV? Is it- <laughs> I, I think I told you this. I, have, I was dying. I was like, what, what do you listen to? Or what do you watch? He's like, I watch sports or talk shows about sports. I was like, oh man, <laughs> yeah. But Damn. it's, I get it though. Like I, we have five I don't, couches. I'm just I saying. don't because I'm like <laughs> do. at 18, I was, I was probably having a little more fun than him. Uh, That's probably we, why he's. We, we all were. Yeah, <laughs> That's mm-hmm. probably why he's sure. so special. But um, anyway, it, it, he's obsessed with the game. Like I, I remember, I did. Like I had NHL on the fly, on all the time. Like I. I loved watching hockey at 18, 19. Like, those are the guys you grew up watching. Now you're playing with them. So you're you're infatuated with the game. So I get it. Um, and he definitely has likes and things. But, he, yeah, he just – but not really – like, not as much as you'd think. Like, yeah. you, you give him that, but he's he's very dialed in to, to the sport and loves it. And, you know, for his sake, though, I hope he understands he's going to need some outlets as he gets older. And that will come with time. But he's 18, so there's no rush on it. And – you know he's got a great head on his shoulders, and he and he doesn't. He's really good in the room, like with the guys, and so that that helps, obviously. Yeah, and we've I mean we've talked about it too. Like, you'd rather have a guy like him be like pushing to get a little bit more, and just be like, hey, like you know you can do some other things besides hockey, rather than having to rein a guy in. Yes, and be like, hey, you're missing practice or something. You know, yeah. like you'd ra- <laughs> much rather have the you know Connor the way that he is. Yeah. And I, I think the biggest thing is you can be that way as long as you're able to be relatable to your teammates. Right. Right. That is, he's already going to be put on a pedestal because of his pedigree and, and what he's done and, and who he is. So you have to make sure that as long as you're able to sit in there in the locker room and joke around and, and be relatable and hang with the guys and, and have that ability, then you're fine. Do whatever you want to do. It's just you have to have that, though, because those are the guys you're going to war with. they got to know that you're in the trenches with them, and maybe they don't value the same things you do, but they still care, and they, you know, th- that, that matters. So that's the biggest thing is teaching him that. And I think that comes with age. That comes with maturity. And, you know, when you're young and you're just so consumed in your own bubble that as you get older and a little more experience, you start to kind of venture out and realize, all right, I can, I can help here and there. And that's why it's on us right now as older guys to kind of do that part. And then hopefully he sees us do that and realize the value in it. And then he'll do it as well. well we, I think we even saw that a little bit early in the season from him where, and I think we've discussed this with you before, I might be wrong, but where before he got hurt, there was almost this like deferral 
of like, well, let him do everything. He's con-, and it was kind of like Connor, and then it was everybody else, mm. and it almost felt like the team was kind of like watching him do his thing, and then for whatever reason, he gets hurt. Blackwell comes back. Blackwell brings what he brings. Yeah. You guys start playing better night after night, and then you plug Bedard into that, and it's a totally different thing. And it, does it feel now more like a group than it did early in the year? Yep, and I think there's just a feeling out process that you have yeah. to go through naturally, right? Like, it, it is. There's a there's a awe aspect of, like, you know, there's a, it's just human nature. You're going to watch a kid at 18 do what he's doing, um, especially before he got hurt. I mean, he was impacting the game and, and playing really well for us, so... You know, you kind of do get caught up in like, oh man, and and our team was still trying to find itself. Let's be honest. At that time, before he got hurt, like we weren't we weren't really a team in the sense we were still coming together. We were trying to figure out what we were, and and still are trying to figure out what we are. Um, but even more so then. Um, so it was it was a lot more difficult. And um, in, in fairness, he probably just we, we realized that how good he was, and we're like, oh well, he's going to take over this game or or do this, and we'll kind of just make sure we we, we have our spots, but. He needs help too, and I think now guys have the confidence to know. Okay, I can jump in and help too. I can I can be this player for the team. I found my role, and and that just came with time too, right? And then that's that's the big part of why these things are frustrating. That's why you don't want to get caught in rebuilding and picking up number one picks, and because it's 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 time. It's yeah. building chemistry. It's bringing in the right people, the right culture, and you don't want to blink and and four years down the road of picking up high picks, and you're still kind of where you were before. Yes. All right, we got to take another break. We got some super chats we're definitely going to get to here with Nick. Also, uh, Lawrence, put a little star there on the Hockey Barnes comment. We want to mention that, too, for sure. Uh, but first, uh, got to get my clothes cleaned. Where am I going? Uh, you are going <laughs> to CD One Price Cleaners because you and all the other customers are going to save over 30% on their dry cleaning bill just by switching to CD One Price Cleaners. Other cleaners charge a different price for every garment type. Plus, they have up charges, and you may pay a different price each time you visit. At CD One Price Cleaners, they charge, get this, one price wow. for their garment. Clever. Even yeah, Great marketing. It, it's <laughs> not just a clever name. Even for your number 17 Blackhawk jersey, if you need to get that dry clean, it's the same low Strom. price. Dylan Strom? <laughs> Wayne President. Joe Murphy? Wayne President. Jason Wayne Dickinson. <laughs> Jake and Dick- Jason, Jason Dickinson, yeah. Jason, Jason Dickinson, Dickinson. <laughs> Oh, this is going off the rails quickly. Sorry. They have a fast Read turnaround. We do this all the time. Sorry, I'll stop. CD one price cleaners. You, you, you have a problem. <laughs> well, well, we know that. Now you made me lose the ad copy, Doc. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Anytime a Red Oval Van Ark comeback, <laughs> come it's just... Should I st- where'd it go? We got it. It's we under are, C. Yeah, thanks. All right, anyway, they have fast turnaround, much faster than this ad read is. They have your orders <laughs> ready the same day or the next day. Other cleaners can take two to four days to have your clean garments ready. CD One Price Cleaner sends you a text when your order is ready and say, hey, come get your stuff. They have a wide variety of services like dry cleaning, wash and fold laundry, blankets and comforters, tailoring and alterations, leather cleaning, and area rug cleaning. Visit chgo.cdone.com. Once there, you can pick from an in-store coupon or online pickup and delivery coupon offers. I doubted myself, and I was right. Rito Von Arks was number 17. Yes, I have right. a problem. You are weirdo. Never doubt yourself. Uh, and in three years, maybe Nick will still be here. He can bring Connor with him, and he'll be able to crack a nice cold Coors Light yes. probably won't and chill with us on the set. He can't do it yet. I will definitely be, because I'll be retired in three years. So. <laughs> you want to stay for five years. We can, yeah, we can keep what, that chair for yeah. you. Yeah. Play for two more years, and then join us for oh. three years after that. I can't Bring lose any up. more hair, and all i got left is my beard, so we can't be. That'll, that'll, that'll hang on. That'll that'll hang on. Fit right in. Yeah. Well, crack a nice cold Coors Light with us. Uh, we like to do it when things are uh, stressful or uh, the game is intense. And you're battling for those two points, and we got to come on the air a little bit. Take that edge off. Coors Light is the way to do it. They help you find moments to chill all year long. And you know it's the perfect beer to chill because it is uh, cold lagered. It is cold filtered. It is cold packaged for a smoother finish. When those mountains turn blue, it is as cold as the Rockies. When it's time to chill, open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. When it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer we reach for here at CHGO. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Again, CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Put a little green food dye in there on Sunday. Boom. Sure. Yeah, you can do that. Sounds. You're ready to go for St. Patrick's Day. 
Yeah. Game day Sunday, right? Game day Sunday. Yeah, oh, man. We gotta watch. Save my beer for after. Yeah. 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 Gotta watch Are they going to bring back the dancing, uh, the dancing guy again? I'm sure he'll I'm be sure there. they will. And, yeah. and you'll hear me bitch about Audibly it. Audibly groan. <laughs> I'm pumped for St. Patty's here, though. Because I heard it's yeah. it's very cool. They, yeah. they died. I was in Boston they, in the past, which is awesome. Right. Yeah. But I heard it's actually even bigger and better here. They dyed the river uh, green, know, which is uh, a fun fun thing. And yeah, I mean it's uh, it's it's an awesome town. It's like for almost like a month long thing here. But well, my thing is like yeah. that's totally fine. Like no issues to the animals, like in the fish. Yeah. Like, no, I, mean, I think no, it's, it's fine. just a, it's it's like an. I mean, you probably don't want to eat them anyway. <laughs> it yeah, looks like true. <laughs> like the. Like ooze from I Ninja think yeah. yeah I think if you're living and surviving in the Chicago River yeah you're not a little food well. dying yeah. is not <laughs> going to kill you. It's not the worst thing point. you're going to encounter. It's yeah. a great point. Have they? It hasn't no, happened it, yet, right? Friday, I would think. No, it comes Saturday. It's Saturday. Saturday. Morning. Saturday okay, morning. cool. Yeah. Parade. We're it's go very cool it to like be there and see it happening. It's yeah, it's quite amazing. So yeah, it is cool. Chicago St. Patrick's Day it can't be beat. Well, and they're doing a tailgate before the Blackhawks game on Sunday. So hopefully they got extra security hired for the game. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it could it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be a, right. good thing it's at five. It's and gonna be a to, loose crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. It'll be fun. Well, it's crazy. I went to uh, I was in Dublin once for the four for the fourth for St. Patrick's Day, and the drinking age there is like eighteen. So in is Chicago really? you see eighteen year olds drunk, in Ireland you see like fourteen year olds drunk. That's, that's and it's always, very off putting. It's always yeah. fun. It's like <laughs> that's a child. Yeah, that is a drunk child right there. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. All right, let's it's get to some European of these super approach. chats yeah. uh, while we can. Got one here from McLovin who says, "Nick, I'm holding you to the Bedard hot mic and staying five years. Luke might need a good <laughs> assistant coach coming up soon." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> coaching isn't for me. These guys don't listen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's these days. No one yeah. wants to work. Yeah. Uh, Wendy City Hockey listen. says, "Nick, you've easily become a top five all time favorite player of mine." Thank you for becoming a Blackhawk as a leader on and off the ice. That's why. There you That's go. That's awesome. Thank you very much. We know he's got the uh, the 17 hat. And jersey. Very yeah. sweet. Yep. He had the uh, Felino 17 jersey on the last mm-hmm. time he said it. That's unreal. Thank you. And our buddy at the Hockey Barn. Have you been there yet on Ogden? No, I heard about it, though. It's sweet. I got to go check it's, that out. Yeah, it's check awesome. it out. We were talking about going in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah you should. Check you out. It's awesome. Uh, it says, a friend of mine wanted to thank you, Nick. A few weeks ago, you signed a stick for his son who traded you a Chicago oh, yeah. police patch. Much respect. Thank you for being a class act. Absolutely. So my pleasure. Always people here love you, cops. man. They love you here. Uh, those are three people. Those yeah. are, one was my cousin. That's true. <laughs> I'm just Two of them. No, hate, I'm, hate I'm, say that. you know what? It's, uh, I'm really enjoying our time here, and it's been really special. So I'm, I'm excited to get us to a point where we're winning, and then hopefully the bond even becomes tighter. And, and um, But, yeah, I've been, it, well, I've been here, so, so happy here. here here's evidence to that point is – Jonathan Taves just left the team last year, and he was, he is capital C captain for the city. 100%. And everyone said, do not name a captain for a couple of years, and it took two or three months before we had people here saying, give Nick the C. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. Like, that is, that is the kind of uh, impression you've made on this city in a short time, and when this city hooks its claws into you, man, they don't let go. Like, oh, you're going you're gonna to have a home here forever uh, all if you keep, keep putting up those forces games at least. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. As long as I keep doing that, I'll be fine. Yeah. No, I'm I'm loving it. Uh, I'm and I'm very humbled by that, obviously. And, and uh, you know, I know Jonathan, and I know what he's meant to this organization and this team and the city. So um, I don't take that lightly. But we're just trying to build something great here again. And then you know, if we can get back to what he was able to accomplish here, oh man, what a special feeling that, that would be. be good. That would be awesome. That would be very good. That would be good. I, you know, I actually wondered, like, when you found out you were getting traded to Chicago. What was that like? I mean, you're going from a team that had a historically great regular season, Stanley Cup, you know, uh, contenders, obviously. When you find out you're traded to Chicago, like, what goes through your mind in those initial moments? Like, what, how did you feel when that happened? I mean, I think you're a little – you're trying to figure things out, right? Yeah. Like, you know, I, I, was, I was able to talk to Kyle pretty quickly after that, which helped uh, me understand the thought process. And I was pretty humbled by what he had to say and – and why he wanted me to come and amongst other guys. And um, I think that's what got me excited right away is that I was looking for that. And I obviously loved my time in Boston and was, I was excited about, you know, helping that team if it was going to come down to that or, um, but once this opportunity came around, I was like, no, this is exactly what I'm actually looking for. And I think Boston would have been a little complacency on my part. Um, and, and what I was wanting to give and what I felt like I could give, and so I think that's been really nice, and that that in itself is just the expanded role 
um, the opportunity to help build something the way I feel it needs to be done in the NHL and, and coming into this group with not really knowing anybody and, you know, trying to, trying to make bonds and, and, and make people understand what it is to be a really good team and what it is to be a team in, in the NHL and what can, that can feel like. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to have already, you know, I fell in love with Jason Dickinson and, uh, you know, a lot of these guys right away, Seth Jones, I'd known for a long time, I was so excited to work with him again, Connor Murphy, I'd played with, and, you know, the list goes on, I've been really impressed with Tyler Johnson's hockey IQ, and even the young fringe guys who are RFAs, I'm loving, like, a Mackenzie Entwistle and Radish, and, um, you know, and then seeing the Vlasics and, and these guys that have come in, and, and what they've meant to the organization, so it's excited me for the future here, and, and what we can try and build, but, it's still that process and, and then making guys understand how hard it is to do. And um, so, yeah, not to give you a long winded answer, but it's just, I'm excited, but also, you know, appreciative and, and, and hopeful for what's to come. Do you remember like where you were when you heard the news? I was at my house in Sudbury, just yeah. hanging out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was a little shocked at the time. And then, and then Kyle called pretty quickly. So, um, you know, haven't hadn't really had a chance to really talk to him over the years. We're both from Sudbury, mm. so instant connection and just and just hearing his passion and uh, I've been really impressed with Kyle um, since I've I've come here and uh, I've really admired the way he's handled our team and, and his vision for what's to come and um, I have a ton of faith and trust in him and I'm excited to see it through with him. Well, I just wanted to share the the we moment were, we were that, that that we experienced when <laughs> we oh, heard about you, you guys uh, were hammered drunk being traded no no <laughs> oh. as you'll you'll see we were, here we were driving oh. to the draft in nashville driving to the draft in nashville Come on. this was at a gas station in kentucky blackhawks yeah, podcast over coming at you from kentucky. the El- elizabeth town kentucky <laughs> bp hey the blackhawks have made a trade they acquire forwards taylor hall and nicholas felino oh, yeah, was the, the throw in i forgot Bruins for defenseman oh, ian mitchell yes. and defenseman alec regula yeah, Mitchell and Regula are both <laughs> defensemen that are. Yeah, I mean, it's you get the you get the point. I turn it off. Yeah, it's... oh, I turned it off. Yeah, all right, good. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's where we stop were. it before yeah. we get to the. That problem. was actually like, awesome. I don't know why I called. You <laughs> must have been in the release. Nicholas, Nicholas it must have been Nicholas in the release. I like that. Might have. Yeah. Or, or, sure. or we were just slap happy from driving for nine hours. That yeah. could be. Yeah, we yeah. had. Uh, you guys look like you were well on your way to having some drinks, though. <laughs> well, oh, Na- 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 <laughs> Nashville was a Nashville was a fun time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think uh, we, we drove. We had five of us in a minivan with all of our equipment driving down to Nashville for the cover to draft. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Uh, you know, it was a good time. That's where Kyle from Chicago was born. That's, that's where, right. it, was, that's where right. it happened. Yep. 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 Let's see what he can do in Vegas this year. For yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're awesome. not driving there. We're flying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's right. You guys have moved up in the world, baby. We Let's go. We better. I, I hope yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to our bosses. All right. We know you got to fly next, so we're going to yeah. wrap things up. Uh, we're back tomorrow night, post game. Uh, the debut of Landon Slager. We didn't even talk about today. Hey, yeah. I'm next pumped. Time. Really, really, get quick, really great kid, though. Great first impression, and I'm pumped to have him. He's. Uh, got a lot of really good character and attitude and spunk and um i've heard great things about him and his family too so i'm, I'm pumped to have him and oh. look forward to getting known he's a notre dame guy it's how it works all right. all right we'll talk to everybody tomorrow post game sorry post we gotta game. wrap up the show guys yes yes yeah, can't sorry. My you're right about notre no, dame you're right talk to you yeah. tomorrow on the chgo blackhawks podcast <laughs> We all city like the mayor. 